Today I am reviewing The Labors of Hercules. It is a Hercule Poirot uh, short story collection by Agatha Christie. Um, and this one was written in 1947. It's, a, it's an interesting um, kind of exploration for Christie uh, because she follows the 12 labors of Hercules. So there are 12 corresponding chapters. Now, um, Hercules, of course, is the, uh, the character from uh, Greek and Roman uh, mythology whom Hercule Poirot is named after, Hercule Hercules. Um, the fact that he bears very little physical resemblance uh, to his classical counterpart um, doesn't really matter in this case, uh, because both characters uh, have a relentlessness um, uh, about them that they, that they have in common. Um, both have an objective, and both pursue it um, until they complete that objective. Um, and so, Poirot decides he's he's starting to get older. We saw in the Hollow he's got a weekend house. He's trying to kind of take it easy. In in this one he says that he is going to only solve twelve more cases and that they have to, uh, in some way, relate to the twelve labors of Hercules. Okay, so what are the the twelve labors or the twelve tasks that Hercules has to um, has to accomplish? Uh, first of all, he has to slay the Nemean lion and bring back its skin. Um, he has to slay the nine-headed uh, Lernaean Hydra. Um, he has to capture the golden stag of Artemis. He has to capture the um, Ermanthian boar. He has to clean the Augean stables in a single day. Uh, he also has to slay uh, the Stymphalian birds, capture the Cretan bull, steal the mares of Diomedes, obtain the girdle of the Amazon warrior queen Hippolyta, obtain the cattle of the monster Gurion, and steal the apples of Hesperides, which are, were hidden uh, by Atlas. Uh, and then, in his final uh, task, he has to capture Cerberus, the guardian dog of Hades. Um, and he can't use any weapons. He's got to bring it back with him. So, um, Poirot is looking for cases that uh, follow along these lines, which may seem impossible, um, but Christie uses uh, this uh, this kind of framework to come up with some of her most engaging Poirot stories, to my mind. Um, for example, I'll just read you quickly uh, how these correspond. Um, the, the Nemean lion uh, involves a Pekingese dog that's dognapped and held for ransom. Um, Pekingese dogs were at one time considered to be like, or were called small lions almost. Um, the Lernian Hydra uh, involves gossip mongers that are accusing a doctor of poisoning his wife. So this monster who every time you cut off his head, a couple more grow in its place. Uh, he, uh, Christie uses uh, this image to to symbolize um, gossip and, uh, and rumor in a small village. The Arcadian deer, a garage mechanic, falls in love with a lady's maid. Um, the Romanthian boar, an under, underworld gang leader, is chased into the Alps. That's a really kind of an exciting one for Poirot. Uh, the Augean stables, the gutter press newspaper is flinging mud at, prime, at a prime minister. Uh, the Stymphalian birds, female blackmailers in uh, Herzog, Slovakia, are stirring up trouble. The Cretan bull, a woman's boyfriend, appears to be going mad. The horses of Diomedes, four wild young daughters, get mixed up in a world of drugs. The girdle of Hippolyta, an exclusive Parisian finishing school, holds the key to stolen, a stolen Rubens painting. The flock of Gurion, a group of women, have been brainwashed by a uh, dangerous cult. The apples of Hesperides, an Italian Renaissance goblet, goes missing. The capture of Cerberus, a dope ring, operates out of a subterranean nightclub. Um, these are these are just wonderful stories, and and they take Poirot all over the place. Most of them take place in London, and we get to see um, once in a while we see uh, Miss Lemon, we see um, George, his butler. We don't see Hastings. Um, I believe we even see uh, Jap at one point. Um, uh, but that's, then some of the cases take him to Paris, to uh, the Swiss Alps. Um, so he's traveling all over the place um, in, this, uh, in this collection. And these stories are amazing and uh, a lot of fun because they... I think by, give, by um, subjecting herself to a framework as rigid as 
following these 12 labors, Christy actually is able to exercise more creativity, which I think is often the case when we have, uh, sometimes when we have uh, limitations, it forces our creative minds to work harder. So um, in this case, particularly the uh, the story where these women get involved in this cult, uh, very unlike Christy, um, and uh, and the ways uh, that that Christy uh, works with Poirot in and through these plots and uh, and how he solves them is just very clever. Um, each of the stories stands alone uh, very nicely, but of course having the framework of the entire Twelve Labors and the this a kind of a prologue that uh, that starts out the collection of stories uh, that, that kind of brings it all together. Uh, so it, I think it's best read all together. Um, I give it a five out of five. I think it's a very strong collection of short stories by Christie. Um, next, I'm going to be reviewing uh, Taken at the Flood, also known as There Is a Tide, another Poirot novel, a shorter one.